Sometime after the destruction of Ai, Joshua built an altar on Mount Ebal. Joshua prepared a burnt offering and a fellowship offering, and he made a copy of the Law of Moses on stone tablets. He had half of the tribe stand on Mount Ebal, and the other half stand on Mount Gerizim. Joshua read the entire law to the people. He read the blessings and the curses of the covenant. Everybody listened, both native-born Israelites and the foreigners who lived with them. Now, the book of Joshua portrays two different responses of the people of Canaan, resistance or acceptance. The Gibeonites choose the path of non-resistance and are spared through a ruse. The Gibeonites feared Israel, so they dressed themselves up in rags and packed their bags with moldy bread and wandered into the Israelite camp. They claimed they had come from far away and wanted to make a peace treaty with Israel. Joshua felt sorry for them and agreed without consulting God. They made a covenant of peace, but soon after Joshua found out that these people had not come from far away, nor were they poor. The text says that this covenant is the reason why the Gibeonites live among the Israelites to this day. However, this covenant was of unequal status. Israel could not kill these people because of their covenant, so they made them into their own personal woodcutters and water carriers. However, King Adoni Zedek of Jerusalem forms a coalition of kings from Hebron, Jarmuth, Lachish, and Eglon, and attacks Gibeon because of their treaty with Joshua. And Israel comes to the aid of the Gibeonites, marching all night from Gilgal. The text says that Yahweh fights for Israel by throwing the armies into confusion and by pounding them with large hailstones. Joshua also prayed for the sun and the moon to stand still, and the text says that God caused the sun to stand still for half a day. The kings of the coalition hid in a cave from Israel, but Joshua captured them, impelled them on poles, and then buried them. The text also says that on that same day, Joshua and the Israelites conquered several other southern cities and completely destroyed them. Makeda, Libna, Lachish, along with Horam, king of Gezer, who had come up to help Lachish, Eglon, Hebron, and Debir. The text says that all these kings and their lands Joshua conquered in one campaign, because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. It then says that King Jabin of Hatzor called together all of the northern kings to fight against Israel, Madon, Shimron, Akshaf, the northern kings who were in the mountains, the kings in the Arabah south of Kinneret, the kings in the western foothills, the kings in Napat Dor, the Canaanites in the east and west, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, and Hivites. And the text says that they came out with all their troops and a large number of horses and chariots, a huge army as numerous as the sand on the seashore. But the text says that Israel came upon them and destroyed them, chasing them all over the land until they were killed. The text says that Joshua himself burned the city of Hatzor, but that they did not burn any of the other cities. Now, verse 18 of chapter 11 says that Joshua waged war against all of these people for a long time, which seems to be a different perspective than what we just read. The text also says that the Lord hardened the hearts of these people so that they would go to war against Israel and be destroyed without mercy. We then read that Joshua gave the conquered land to the tribes of Israel, and the land had rest from war. The book of Judges has a very different take on the conquest of the land, saying that many of the cities that were on the list of conquered cities in Joshua weren't actually conquered. This could also possibly explain why little to no detail is given on the battles that would have taken place to conquer them. As already mentioned, some passages of Joshua seem to agree more with Judges when they say that it actually took a really long time to conquer much of the land. In chapters 13 through 22, we see that all the tribes receive an allotment of land, and Levitical cities are distributed for the special priestly tribe of Levi. This section shows that God's promise to the Israelites has been fulfilled. Also, the inheritances were determined by a lot. The holy war theme is continued, and Joshua and Caleb are provided with their own settlements. At the end of the book, we read that Joshua summoned Israel in order to give his farewell address, and he said, It was the Lord your God who fought for you, but it's a conditional message. First, there's a stress on obedience. Be careful to obey everything in the law of Moses. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not serve their gods. Hold fast to the Lord. And then there are warnings about disobedience. He mentions nations that will remain, saying, If you ally yourselves with them or intermarry with them, God will not drive them out. They will be a snare for you until you perish from the land. He also talks about expulsion from the land, saying, If you violate the covenant, the Lord's anger will burn against you, and you will quickly perish from this good land he has given you. At the very end, Joshua performs a ceremony to have the covenant renewed at Shechem. First, God's saving action is emphasized. Your ancestors worshipped other gods, but I brought Abraham out of their land. I gave Abraham his son Isaac. I gave land to Jacob and Esau. I rescued Israel from Egypt. I destroyed your enemies. I made Balaam bless you when he tried to curse you. I gave you land you did not plant and cities you did not build. And then a command is given to choose. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, 
whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then a declaration is given to serve Yahweh. The people say we will serve the Lord, and we are witnesses against ourselves if we do not. Then we see the recording of the covenant. Joshua recorded this event in the Book of the Law of God. He set up a large stone under an oak tree, and said the stone would be a witness against them if they were untrue to their God. The end of the book of Joshua says that after he had spoken all of these things, he died at the age of 110. He was buried in Ephraim, the land of his inheritance. The text also says that the Israelites buried Joseph's bones, which they had brought up out of Egypt, at Shechem. This text says that Jacob had bought this land from the sons of Shechem's father, Hamor, which is a bit different than the gruesome version we read in Genesis. Eleazar the priest also died and was buried at Gibeah in the hill country of Ephraim. And so ends the book of Joshua.